we're going to play these two clips back to back. Uh, this is the old Angela, and we're going to play these clips, and then we're going we're gonna to jump into it and have a good time. Here we go. Two truths can exist at once. And that's a really big message of this full moon, is that more than one truth can exist at a time. So it's not only black or white, it's black and white, and it's every shade in between. The ninth house, you know, personal growth, coming back to that with like religion and philosophies and ideologies, right? Think about your ideologies. Have you been too pride in your be- or too proud in your beliefs lately? Have you been pushing people away because of your belief system? Think about that. Think about what's going on in the world right now. Have you been too in your beliefs that you can't make room for other people's? That's something to consider. That's the shadow aspect of Leo energy, being way too proud, you know? Like I said, multiple truths can exist at once. So have you not been holding space for other truths? Have you been so into this one truth that you have blinders on and you can't even make room for the other ones, for what other possibilities and truths exist at the same time as your own? That's super important to consider, right? Because multiple truths can exist at once. And to be human is to catch the falling person, right? So we have to remember that. We have to remember that our brothers and sisters in their truth, in their ideologies, in their ninth house of personal growth are just as valid as you are in yours. And there is plenty of room on the stage, okay? There's plenty of room on the stage. Okay, I think people can kind of get the idea of where you're at, uh, where you're at now and what you're saying. So you were there, you're the one who said those words and you're the one who made those claims and you made some notes. Kind of give us your thoughts now. How, How do you respond to your old self? So it's nonsense. Um, Clearly I'm obsessed with relativism, but I didn't even know what that meant at the time. And just hearing myself say those words, it's an entirely self-defeating position. The words that I'm saying completely collapse in on themselves because although it's satisfying to hear, it completely just excuses objective reality and it creates a subjective life experience in which we can do no wrong unless we decide for ourselves that it is so. So like it essentially absolves the self of sin, which of course I would have never used that word or understood even what that necessarily meant at the time. But it reminds me of first John um, one, one eight, where it says, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So that word truth, because the thing is I was deceiving myself at the time and the truth was not in me. So I was obsessed with this idea of multiple truths. I was obsessed with my truth and the idea of kind of like truth fluidity. But the thing is by definition, right? By definition of truth, truth is accordance with fact or reality. It's actuality. Truth is always valid regardless of parameters or context. And it's unwavering. Truth is unwavering and truth is complete. There is no fluidity in truth or else it wouldn't be true. (laughs) And, you know, there's only one truth. And I know that now that that truth is Jesus. John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So, When I hear that now, saying that multiple truths can exist at once or all roads lead to God, you know, another kind of famous new age slogan, that does not benefit anybody. And it was not benefiting anybody, despite me thinking that it was. Um, I'm harming my audience with that message by creating this false and counterproductive narrative that truth is not consistent and that it is... It's not in that truth is not an unavoidable reality in which we must contend with. Mm. I'm again creating this idea of fluid truth. And I was I was lying to my audience and I've repented for that so many times. But just as another public apology, because I can't say sorry enough, I am sorry for that. And I always say, Father, forgive me for I knew not what I did. Um, You know, but the thing is, it was harmful and it was a lie because I 
left them with nothing consistent. I left my audience with nothing consistent or reliable on which to rely only themselves, which as we all know, is really not a great parameter of reason or of anything because the heart is deceitful above all things, as gospel tells us. I was leaving my audience with nothing but quote unquote, their truth and honoring their truth. And I was just ultimately with that message and that mantra and that mindset, I was setting people up for failure and worse as I was setting them up for eternal suffering and hell. <laughs> um, because I was encouraging them to reject the truth, essentially, without even realizing what I was doing. John 8, 32, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And of course, again, that truth is Jesus. So that whole concept of multiple truths can exist at once, that was actually bondage. That whole mindset, that ideology, it was bondage to deception and sin. And that other clip that you played from that same episode where I'm talking about how your way is not the only way. Actually, your way is not the way at all, is the thing. None of our ways are the way at all. Jesus is the way. And we talked about this in the last episode, that expression holding space, how I haven't used that term in like seven months when I used to say it all the time. And that's a really kind of like fluff term in the new age community, because it sounds cozy and it sounds sweet to the ears because it's all about like being non-offensive and being tolerant and being non-judgmental and not trying to impose my truth on anyone else. But the thing is that I've, I've said a lot since coming to Christ as I become, you know, more and more persecuted for speaking the truth is that love tells the truth and scripture calls us, yes, to be humble and to be gentle and to be patient in Ephesians 4, 2, but and all throughout scripture, but it is clear, right? Proverbs 17, 15, he who justifies the wicked and he who condemns the righteous are both alike an abomination to the Lord. So for me to sit there and say, you have to hold space for everyone. That's actually an abomination to the Lord because it's justifying the wicked. It's, it's justifying the things in the world that are wrong and that are of sin. It's not loving. It's not loving to let people deceive themselves or to continue to let yourself be deceived. It's, it's actually unloving and love tells the truth. That's something I, I always say when people want to come at me and say, you're being judgmental, you're being intolerant. It's not about any of that. It's about telling the truth because it is the loving thing to do. Holding space justifies the wicked because there is only one truth. And I will just say that over and over that there is only one truth. And people will say, you know, you know, Matthew 7, 1, well, judge not, lest thou be judged, right? Um, people in the new age especially really love to kind of counter that. And it's always interesting because it's people that don't care about the gospel that are saying, well, your gospel says this, so you can't judge me. But the thing is, it doesn't mean not to judge. It actually just shows us how to judge. Um, John 7, 14 says, judge with right judgment. And that's Jesus saying that. And of course, if you read on, not just Matthew 7, 1, where it says, judge not lest ye be judged. If you actually read on into the verses from three to five, it reveals that it's all a matter of hypocrisy. Um, it kind of like if you're not living a life that is yielded to God, then you are not spiritually in a place to lead someone to holiness. If your own sin remains undealt with, you're not in the position to point out the sin of another. So that's what it means. It doesn't mean not to judge people. It just means how we can, how we can judge them and, you know, where, what makes us qualified to judge them. And it's not about thinking, you know, you're better than anyone else or that, or that they are necessarily bad. It's just, here's the truth. And I'm telling that to you because I love you. Um, so it's not, un it's not unchristlike is because this is something I get a lot. It's not unchristlike to call out spiritual deception or counterfeit godliness or any of this new age jargon, because God's word is true. Psalms 119, um, 160 says, I hasten and do not delay to keep your commandments. And that's really what I'm trying to live by is I, I do not hasten to keep your commandments and to abide in your word. And God's word tells us to expose darkness. Ephesians 5.11, take no part in unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. 
and they will be sanctified by the truth. John 17, 7, now that now they know that everything you have given from me is from you. So it's from God. So it's like a roundabout way of coming back to what I was saying in those clips. No, old Angela, <laughs> there's not plenty of room on the stage because Jesus belongs on the stage. All right. of us are his, uh, we're in the crowd. We, yeah. we don't belong on the stage. There's not plenty of room on the stage. 